It was like a terrible nightmare. This record, I feel like, far and away, it's the best thing I've ever done, on every level. You know, you can you can really hear my experience as a musician, uh, confidence. You can hear the songwriting evolving, the playing's better, the tones are better. Everything about it is just natural evolution, and I think I'm onto something here. I, I feel something new, a new phase, basically, taking shape. It's amazing for me to think that this is my fourth record. It's, it's basically five years, four albums. I think there's been a huge shift, not only in writing, but production, where my head's been at. The direction of this record was to make something a little bit more ambitious. When I was actually writing the material, though, I, I wasn't conscious of that. I was just kind of, this is what was coming out. And as the songs were developing, I started thinking about that. Yeah, it's, those headphones are much, like, super mid-rangey and bright. Sounds Do they need an acoustic guitar? What kind of bass tone? I feel like I'm finally becoming the musician I've been trying to be. Yeah, so is that enough lead time? Oh, you, you no, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Here we go. Change up kind of what you're doing on the on the that last take, riding the low E a little bit more. I think I'm I'm just thinking about like how the how it actually starts with those two guitars, like right that. off the first chord. Yeah. Yeah. Let's clean that up. Yeah. You know uh, what? Which is your mat? Which did you like better? The right or the left? You know what? I'm going to do something really radical here and I'm going to just destroy everything. I'll start from scratch. All of it? Yeah. You can do that. At this point in my career, or just in my life, I don't really even think of this as a career, it's just my existence. You know, I, I've been writing so much music and I've, I've released so much music, but now I'm just writing music for the sake of writing music. I'm just trying to create something different and something better every, every single time. And I like to think I have a fan base that kind of is just interested to see where I'm going now and interested to kind of come along for the ride and just see what the next step is going to be. So this is actually the first time I worked with a producer. I worked with Scott Giffen, who engineered the record and co-produced the record with me. And he had some of these kind of game-changing ideas. We used a whole bunch of different guitars, different amps, maybe brought out some of these ideas. I thought they were a little strange, a little unorthodox. But once they were implemented in the music, it was like, I can't live without this now. And we're getting kind of like a, he calls it like a Guns N' Roses Paradise City kind of glassy sound, but like you throw them together. <laughs> Yeah. 
I mean, my opinion doesn't really matter because I love everything that Nick puts out. He's just such a great melody writer, songwriter, and obviously guitar player. It's a joy to be able to sit two feet from him, rip out solos, and kind of fun to tell him to do it again. Because <laughs> it's not like he ever screws up, but I know he can do better at times. So th that was kind of fun. Just got some playing in there that just like, I've ne I haven't heard on any of his records before. And I'm super lucky to be able to have been sitting beside him and coaching him through these and building these solos with him. Last song we did, Weekend by Winter, uh, there was one solo section, one part during the solo section that just, it just killed me. It just killed me. It's like way too long, too many chord changes, and I was so, and it's in an odd time signature, so ambitious ahead of time, but then once you get in there, you're like, <laughs> it was okay. You were patient through it. It worked. It yeah. worked out. Um, Had a good tone. It's you know it's tough trying to fill that much space without repeating yourself or just playing a ton of notes. So yeah. I think we built something that tells a story, yeah. in it, which yeah. is good. So and by the end of it, I was just so frustrated. I'm like, Fucking just all the notes. Just here we go. I think that's the only way you were gonna get through it was was yeah. to um, just get really pissed off and yeah. just play as many notes as possible. Yeah, it worked. It, it ended up pretty cool. I mean, it is an instrumental guitar record, so sometimes you just have to. Sometimes that, that's okay. Yeah. Once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I actually found that I was using maybe less guitar in a certain area or two. You know, having a new kind of sense of space and evolution in the music. Nice. Something I'm, I'm constantly trying to delve into a little bit more. So a lot of the music for Remarkable Human was actually written on a piano. I, I like to play a little bit on my own. And for about a year or so, I had been sitting on the demos from, from this album. Early 2015, I had everything written and finished. With this record, every song is in the same genre, which I didn't plan. I've never done that before. That's a really important step forward for me as an artist. That, that's probably the most important thing about this record. I reached out to my favorite drummer of all time, Gavin Harrison. He was really interested in, in being a part of the record. Gavin said something that really resonated with me, and that was he won't play on something unless he feels like he added something to the music. Not just playing on it, not just being another part of it, but actually adding to the song. So, of course, that was a huge honor because that meant, obviously, he was into the material. <laughs> it felt like he was writing, like, composing parts. So this is the second record I've done with, with Brian Bella, who I think is one of the best rock bass players. I sent him the material a while back and he was really into it again. He's got so much experience with instrumental music, working with guys like Steve Vai and Guthrie and Joe Satriani that this was a breeze for him. And, and you know, he's one of those guys, he doesn't overplay, but he's also super confident and knows exactly what's gonna fit. He absolutely slayed it. This is the first time I've actually done a record where there is piano. It adds a certain drama and kind of theatricality to the record, which I really wanted, which I've always liked. So I'd sent all of these piano demos off to uh, this amazing pianist out of, out of England named Luke Martin. And we spent actually a lot of time uh, kind of refining and focusing on um, tension and, and how much piano to guitar, like the ratio and 
what's too much, what, what needs to be overplayed, what needs to be subtle. Just the fact that there's a piano on here is, is signaling that something, something needs to change, something wants to, to come out of me. And uh, this is definitely the first step in that direction. Even though that was a struggle at the end of the day, I think we had a great day overall. Yeah, and Hypergiant, uh, real bluesy, that uh, Jeff Becky kind of, not Jeff Becky, I mean, maybe he's a person, but Jeff Beck and Stevie Vaughan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and definitely so, a Stevie yeah, vibe in a lot yeah. of it, too. So that's cool. cool. This is great, and the tone, oh my god, the tone, man. Can't wait to show people. So, yeah. yeah, nice job today. Yeah, bud. Even now, I sometimes wake from a dream and find myself shaking from the memory of it. I'll never forget when I first saw him. A man so monstrous, so unhuman, that I refused to think it could ever happen again to anyone else. So we spent a lot of time after the tracking of the guitars, coming up with the organ parts and these kind of soundscape parts. We found these phenomenal dialogue samples from an old 50s sci-fi broadcast. Once we started experimenting with that a little bit, the music, it went from like 2D to 3D in seconds. You know, and a lot of these ideas were Scott's. The thematic nature of his music isn't about the guitar playing. It's about the melody, it's about the song, and um, I think that's what sets Nick apart from, from the other instrumental guitar records and, and players out there. Everyone I've worked with on this record is just, is so much better than me in every respect, which gave me a, an amazing end, end result. It's, it's definitely the most ambitious thing I've done in terms of scope. You know, I wanted everything to fit in the same universe, and the opening track with that dialogue to the ending track where it has that whole scene where the doctor's speaking to the other gentleman about how it could have all been a dream. It's like this weird, almost kind of meta type of thing, and, and uh, I've never done anything remotely close to that. And there's some moments on this record that are really weird and really awkward, and. In the past, I don't think I would have been brave enough to try stuff like that. So I think from a listening standpoint, if you're familiar with my stuff, this will be completely fresh and completely new, and, and I think it'll, it'll attract a completely different fan base, a completely different listener base. And that's exciting, because I, you know, I, I, I don't know how people are going to take this in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. <laughs>